and it's something that I've always liked to do. Even in school, it was something that I saw the other kids wondering what they wanted to do and trying to figure it out, and I always just sort of knew what I wanted to do, which was basically be an illustrator. I think I'm known for a style and subject matter too. Just things that are distinctly Minnesota. Cityscapes, cycling, pinups, food, beer, Grain Belt, Gold Medal Flower, Pillsbury. Those three are very iconic. They're just a really great set that goes together. So I think originally, when I was first kind of starting in this business, I was known for those three. So in 2003, I met up with a collective who was doing a lot of work for First Avenue and the Triple Rock. So I started doing uh, more and more flyers and ultimately gig posters for bands. The bands started seeing and recognizing my style and work sort of just came about that way. I really like to say yes to as many people as I possibly can. And one thing that I really liked about gig posters was that it's a great little design job. They're fun and they get a lot of attention really quickly. I do work um, basically about things that I really like. And I started doing a lot of, lot of pinup kind of artwork. And I got to be more well known for doing the pinup stuff. A lot of bands were contacting me to do pinup style work for them. And I've also been into cycling a lot and I started doing more cycling related pieces. This is a piece I did called Cycle Minneapolis and it was originally done for uh, a bike art show called Art Crank. I want the pinup stuff to be part of a lot of the other stuff that I do so I end up kind of using both both ideas and quite a quite a few things that I do. So I started doing more and more pieces that related back to the bicycle. Cycling is one of those things that I've always loved. I love the, the form and the aesthetic of a bicycle. I just think they're absolutely gorgeous machines. Plus they're extremely utilitarian. And one thing led to another and I started doing more cityscape related items. Um, those became kind of popular and so therefore I felt like maybe I should do more of them. on a sketch of Lake Harriet for my Lake series. I'm referencing Lake Harriet at the end of winter, so there's still ice on the lake, and uh, I want it to look more like a summer piece, so I'm gonna be putting in sailboats and, and um, you know, leaves on the trees to make it look more summery. When I'm sketching something, I'm really just, I'm, I'm sketching in where things are gonna be. So that's just a reference point for me um, for when I'm actually doing my final inks. When I go in and I do my final inks, I'm usually going over my sketch and I'm actually simplifying the lines that are in the sketch to be a little bit more bold and graphic. So there is a lot of hand done qualities in there. Um, I think you can really feel the, the human aspect coming out of the work. I like to use the computer as well, but I like to use it more as a tool to enhance the work, not to create the work. We're gonna print my Lake series uh, that, I'm, that I'm working on. Um, we're gonna do the final color of Lake Calhoun, and uh, my boy Brian Giel, he's gonna help me out, and we're gonna do some printing. So let's get started. On 
this particular one, we're doing three screens, and we're actually doing the key line, which is the very last uh, screen for this print. Key line, other word, otherwise known as uh, outline. Everybody's screen printing process is different, and mine is DIY. I had someone who I was working with a while back, and, and, and he said, you know, being a screen printer, you wear a lot of different hats. You're a chemist. You are an engineer. You know, you're an artist. And the list can go on. And that's fantastic. I love, that's, that's part of it I just absolutely love about screen printing. I guess we'll just see where the next step takes me. I'm not quite sure yet. It's one of those things where I tend to draw things that I like, and uh, whatever I end up liking next, that may be the next thing. I don't know. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.